So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the Q&A. And just so you know, Q&A works like this. If you're here for the live stream, we, I take all your questions and I answer them. It, it can go between five minutes and sometimes 40 minutes. Just depends on, on how many questions I get. And uh, if you're watching the live stream, it'll be done right now. If you're watching the replay uh, for the next hour or so, it'll probably be attached to this. But after that, we cut it and we put it into a separate video uh, because it's an algorithm thing. And that's what it is. So let's get into it, huh? So comments. First one, the elephant in the room, which was pretty funny. Looks like Rob fell asleep in the sun with the blanket above his nose. So that's from the, uh, the thumbnail. And I've gotten these ideas uh, talking to uh, the guys over at Coin Bureau. And they're, they've given me some pretty good insights as far as like uh, thumbnails and uh, different things to actually push more so I can get more uh, views and things like that. Because it's an algorithm. If you want to get more views, then here you go. So that's what we did. That's why the, uh, sometimes the thumbnails look stupid. So that's what's up. Let's see. What else we got? Ah, Rob, give us portfolio. Sure. So here we go. Let's see here. Uh, where'd it go? Crypto. What's that? So just so you know, I'm heavy Bitcoin, Ethereum. It's a lot. It's like, I'm pretty sure it's over 75, 80% by now. And uh, that's just because that's just how things worked out. I've gone down at least 50% of my portfolio, just like you. It is what it is. I'm here for the long run. Here's my portfolio. Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano. But remember, Cardano is locked up into the stake pools. So I've got two of those. And if you want to delegate, links in the description. Voyager, Solana, Theta, Link, Mana, VeChain, Dot, Bat, only time, only because they gave it to me free. Uh, StormX, who is this? Robert Liu from Sweatcoin is now following you. All right. Welcome, Robert Liu, uh, to Sweatcoin. Stellar, Matic, ah, oh, Matic's a good one. Avalanche, Genzukishi, Multiverse, Fame, Everdome. Algorand, Ave, Sand, XRP, Uniswap, EOS. Oh, geez, I still got EOS. Oh, I should probably get rid of that at some point. I have some Tether, not that much. Adam, Die, Celsius, Engine, Silo, Chili's, SPI, Near, Zcash, Tezos, T Fuel, Swissborg, <laughs> IOTA. I do have AMP. AMP, Phantom. I still have Bitcoin Cash, not that much. Uh, Loopring, I didn't get rid of Loopring either. Jesus. Uh, what's this? Wrapped ETH. Uh, synthetics. I don't know what NAS is. Dragon Chain, USDC. <laughs> I still have some Luna because I couldn't get rid of it. Uh, oh, and then there's uh, Meld and World Mobile Token, but those are already, those are stakes, so I don't really can count those. That's my portfolio. But again, it's a lot of stuff, but again, mostly Bitcoin, Ethereum. But, uh, I hate shrimp. Ugh. Cockroaches of the sea. Good question. Rob, what was the first crypto brokerage used to buy Bitcoin? It was Coinbase, like everybody else. That's it. But Coinbase has come a long way. Remember when Coinbase used to crash when, it, when somebody sneezed? Well, in the last big run-up of the big uh, Luna problem, which I don't like even like talking about that. It's just an awful situation. Did it go down? I didn't hear anything about it going down. So Coinbase is doing pretty good. And as much as I would give a lot of guff to Brian Armstrong, Smart guy, and he thinks, and he knows where things are going. So when he talks about self custody, he's like, "Okay, well, how can I be in front of that?" And he, that's why they're offering uh, self custody wallets. <sighs> Ugh. Ben Cowan, who's that? That's yeah, kidding. It's Ben from In the Crivers. I agree with him. Uh, Ninety percent cash at the moment. It's kind of high in cash, but Alchemist, do whatever you want to, man. I don't know about you. Let me ask you guys a question. How do you, do you feel more comfortable with your, the majority of your cash into crypto? And I mean like 90%, 95% all in crypto, especially with the volatility, or do you rest easier at night knowing that there's cash in your bank account and it's okay. You know, there's, there's going to be no Bitcoin max. He's going to jump out from around a bush and beat you up. Uh, just to be honest, do you feel more comfortable with cash in the bank? 
as opposed to having it all in alts and uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum. I personally don't want to have all my money uh, into crypto. I think that's, again, even Mike Novogratz came out yesterday and said, Divers diversification of, uh, of your assets, of your portfolio, is a much better approach than putting a ton into, say, Luna, like he did. So just so you know. Charles Ken Cannon. That's a great name. Rob, based on eating dry powder, how to best approach DCA? Not financial opinion. Yeah. So I'm going to show you what I do. Let me see here. Hey, oh, let's see. I'm going to, I'm going to shill Ben's website yet again. Oops. Sorry, I can't show you that. Hold on. Let me log in. Okay. So here's Ben's website. If you haven't signed up, it's pretty, I think he's having, he's having a sale right now. So I don't get paid a dime for it. So it's just app.intothecryptoverse.com. Uh, it's in my links in the description. So here's what I do. Uh, there's these things called risk levels, okay? And this is a proprietary thing that uh, Ben came up with. And um, Ben's a smart guy, nuclear physicist, nuclear something. And uh, he comes out with these, with these risk levels and he talks about time into these risk levels. And he talks about between, you know, how much time Bitcoin and crypto has been in these specific areas. And it's pretty... It's actually right here. You see time and risk bands. I can't show it to you, but between 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 and 0 0.3, 0 0.4, when it starts to hit these levels, I start to dollar cost average a little bit more. So to answer your question in a better way, Charles, and not just give you some pie in the sky type of thing. So what I do is I dollar cost average. I don't value cost average. Value cost averaging is taking a big, let's, let's say you have 10,000. You say, okay, I'm going to take four lumps of 2,500 bucks and put into Bitcoin at, I don't know, June 1st, August 1st, November 1st, and maybe even January 1st. I'm just going to, that's my value cost average. Or you can dollar cost average a little bit because yeah, that's where I'm at right now. And every day I'm, I'm buying the same thing, which is Bitcoin Ethereum right now. So what I try to do is the money that I bring in it's, it all depends on, on what you want to do. So like as those risk levels, like I've always talked about, as those risk levels, as the, the price starts to drop and the risk level goes down and down and down, once we get to like 0 0.1 to 0 0.2, which I think we're almost there, is I actually start to increase the amount of money that I put into crypto, to my Bitcoin, Ethereum every single day. So if I'm spending 100 bucks or 1,000 bucks, then maybe on those days I'll spend 1,000 and... $200 or whatever else it is. Now there's accumulating, accumulating, but here's the thing. This is super important for me. And I can't give you advice, I'm not a financial advisor. I know I got to keep saying that, but as those risk levels start to go up to 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, because I planted those seeds along the way, I will start to take profits and I'm getting better at this because I used to suck at it. So as I take profits, then I have this dry powder on the sidelines that I can use when it drops again. And guess what? It will drop again. So I can't give you like specific numbers, but that's just how it is. For me personally, it just depends on, on how much. And the number one rule, and even Mike talked about this yesterday, was never invest more than you can afford to lose because just kiss all that money goodbye that, you, that you're investing. It could be gone tomorrow. And I think when you have that mentality, you're like, okay, it could be gone. And I'm just here for three to five years. Nothing really matters. And that's why, like, when you guys see me and the, and the market crashes, I'm like, I've already been here for five years. I don't really, I see where, I believe where things are going. Doesn't matter to me, but I'm not going to be stupid and put all my money in, in like one specific time frame. That's, to me, that's a recipe for a disaster. Just saying. And uh, that's it. Okay, Jackie. Jackie, you're on. I don't know, Rob. I have two Huskies I hike with. I may take them in a challenge. If Look, you know what we should do? We should do a challenge. Whoever can beat me. Gosh, that'll be good. 
let me know in the comments. If you beat me by in June for Sweatcoin, I will do something. I'm not going to jump in the pool. Don't ask me that. That's a, that's a special 100,000 Bitcoin occasion. But if you can beat me in Sweatcoin steps, because I watch, walk every day, all day. If you can beat me, I'll do a, I'll do a poll. We'll see which, uh, what I'll, I'll give the top three or whoever can be. I doubt you're going to beat me. <sighs> okay. <laughs> oh my God, tell us what you haven't got. So just so you know, when I read off that portfolio, just so you know, you realize that even as straight laced and straightforward as I am, I still make mistakes in my earlier years and I'm still paying for those mistakes for crypto. And I got to tell you, as time has gone on, I've realized that the tried and true methods, amazingly, are the ones that work out best for me. Okay. Ah, oh, good one. I have mine in USDC. And you know, like on, in Voyager, you get like 9% APY. I'm just saying. <laughs> Shilling again, Rob. That's right. Need to do more. We all need to do more research, even me. I mean, as much as like, as, as long, the longer, the older that I get and the more that I'm in this space or any other space, the more I realize how much I do not know. And I always will quote, quote Socrates, I know nothing. That's true. Ben is awesome. So is James. So are a lot of people. C.T. Larson, great guys. Hashoshi. Simon Dixon. You name it. Those guys are great. I was a good investor. Rob is a decent investor. I am an okay investor. John Collar has got a good question. Uh, Celsius Network saw another drawdown pending. Look, they took a big hit, and rightfully so, with that whole, uh, the ability for accredited investors and not allowing those in the United States. I think people didn't like that they didn't stand up to the regulators. What are you going to do? So that was a problem. And I saw that the outflows and they, it's not from me, it's from Celsius. You can go to Celsius accounts on, on Twitter. Let's pull it up, huh? What's Rob talking about? I'll show you the outflows. Let me bring this up. Hey, hey, there it is. Celsius networks. Oh, they follow me, how nice. Uh, let's see. It's not it. Five new coins. Where the heck is it? May 17th. No, it's a little warmer. Aha. So this is straight from Celsius. May 6th to May 12th. Here's the registrations 12,019. First time, 2000. Inflows, 396 million. Outflows, negative 1.15 billion. So, that's not for me, straight from Celsius. So if you're concerned about that, then you do what is best for you. Me personally, I'm not gonna keep a ton of uh, my crypto on any platform, any one platform, that's a recipe again for disaster. So even though the yield is nice, is it worth five, 6%? I'm just saying. But I will still keep some on Celsius. I like Alex and the mission that they do, so that's what. <laughs> Hey, Rob, how many times a day do you hear Yankee go home in Puerto Rico? I hear that all the time from my wife. And how beautiful are the golf courses? Uh, I don't play golf. Uh, Mullet does. And uh, he's supposed to teach me some golf. But uh, I hear they're awesome. But the whole island is awesome. You know what else is great about the, that island? Uh, everybody's good looking and like in shape. It's amazing for Puerto Rico. Like you go there and you're like, man, I got I to gotta do some sit-ups. Anyhow. Uh, Celsius is solid. The market is not. That's very true. <sighs> the OG Marky. Hey, Marky. Thank you. I appreciate it. Me and Marky go back. Great gal. Uh, is That's a great question. So is Voyager ever going to have a desktop app? They should. You know what's concerning with, with me? It's just us. It's just me and you and a couple of thousand people. Is, uh, you know... Celsius, I love Steve. I love their what they're doing over there, but uh, they're kind of like Cardano in some ways, where it just takes a little bit more time to get things done. Sometimes it's a, that's a good thing, as we see like the rub the rug pulls for DeFi and the other stuff that I'm not going to mention again. 
But uh, it was amazing to me that FTX was able to start um, to give out to a select few customers in the United States the ability to trade uh, equities or stocks on the FTX platform. That's something that uh, Voyager and Market Rebellion have been working for for quite some time to get that done. I thought it would be done a little bit sooner, but FTX beat him the, beat him the punch. I thought that was pretty interesting how that worked out. Just saying. The desktop app, same thing. You know, um, some people don't like using a mobile app. I don't like using the, my mobile phone all the time. I'm getting old. My eyesight sucks. So I could use a desktop app. That'd be great. And then I can move things around. I don't have to squint and do different things. That'd be awesome. Also, uh, Europe, to get them branched out uh, after they picked up LGO, which was the uh, French exchange. Now, I had Steve on the show three weeks ago, somewhere around there. And he said that all these things that I just mentioned should be done by the end of this year. That's what they say. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon. So it is a thing, but I got time. Uh, Rudy says, UST back or not, I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. And I'm going to tell you why. Um, I've been around and I've, I've seen how these different projects, once the trust goes, it's really hard to get back. And um, you got to have a super amazing community to get that going. That might have been okay for Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, but will UST make it and Luna Classic, I guess, or UST, the actual peg stable coin, which I now, as I understand it, the proposal, it's not going to be algorithmic. It's going to be pegged to like USDC and, and different things. Maybe, but I'm not going to do it. But if some people can, and some people, again, if you want to try it out, it's on you. Ah. <sighs> Steak and Earn says, use a tablet if you hate using your phone. I don't hate using my phone. I just thought it'd be great on a desktop. I got two. I don't have a tablet. I'm not going to buy a tablet for that. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, hey, Rob, coming to PR end of June. Let's connect. We'll chat about a blockchain project. I think it'll be interesting. There's always a blockchain project out there. See, which leads me to my next point. Let me get this out of here. Uh, see that thing over there where Dan will never contact you? I, besides the gentleman that just talked to me, I get 20 offers a day for different projects. 99.9% .9 I, I don't talk about. And uh, if you see something in the, in the email or Discord or Telegram, it's not me. It's all a bunch of scams. Just so you know, that's what's up. Ah, uh, Okay. Good question. Shola. Shola says, what's the safest stable coin at this point? I've always believed in the USDC. I, not that I don't believe in UST, but, and they've, they've been audited by uh, a company out of the Virgin Islands, sure. And uh, it said it was fully backed one-to-one -one with not just, not just with, with fiat, but different assets. Okay, uh, that's fine. But I've, you know, I, ha I took a look at the, uh, the congressional hearing where Alistair, I forget his, his, his name, the uh, CEO of uh, USDC. And he said, we, have, uh, we are 100% backed by all different types of assets for USDC. So you can, it's safe. And he gave all the documents and all the paperwork to him. And it was audited by someone here in the States. So I am, if I have to do anything, I'm going to put in USDC. If I have to use UST or Tether, not, well, Tether, not USD. If I have to use Tether, I will use Tether and I will get out of Tether. I have a little bit of Tether in my uh, wallet uh, that you, we just, I just did for my portfolio, but it ain't a lot. And uh, to me, I just like USDC. Maybe because I'm American. America. That's it. Rob, do you have any thoughts involved? I do not. You and James, the best channels. Yeah, I mean, depends on what you like. Like some people don't like this channel because it's not hype enough. It's not hopium enough. It's not we're releasing the bulls every day or whatever it is. I just don't, I just don't see it. I mean, if, if I got a good story, 
like the one that we talked about with that, uh, what was it? Swiss Julius Bear, the Swiss company. Like I'll say this is a pretty great story, but I got to give it to you both sides because it's not, because when you, it, it's exhausting to, to continuously get hopium again and again in every single video. And then, you know, you're like, well, what happened to, to the market? It didn't go up like you said it was going to go up. And you really, it's just draining. So you have to be balanced and you have to have your feet on the ground. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, it's a shame. Clowns. Uh, <laughs> give, me, <laughs> give me hopium, I'm an addict. Huh. You know what? It's, that's what brought me into the, into the market. People would say, um, you know, Bitcoin's going to a million. This is in 2017. I believed him. I went a little bit too heavy. And then when I crashed, I'm like, what happened? Everybody told me it's going to a million. And that's when I really started to get the principles of, uh, of the long-term plays and dollar cost averaging and things like that. Cause no one knows, no one has any, no one, people have an idea, but no one, no one knows where this, this whole, uh, industry is going at what time, nobody. And they, I mean, they have some great theories, but I know some very smart people. Those theories did not, uh, pan out. Yes. This is a great question. Hey, Rob, is there a bottom for Bitcoin that would surprise you? Below, it would surprise me, honestly, if we went below 15K. And that's, that's a pretty conservative. It would actually even surprise me kind of if, we if we went below 20K. Because 20K was the all-time high in 2017. I kind of feel like that's kind of like that base level. But like Ben's always talking about, there's a date with destiny, the 200-week uh, moving average. And uh, once, we, once we hit that, you know, if it goes below there, watch out. So, but yeah, below 20 would surprise me and 15, below 15 key would shock me. Here's the next question I think you should be asking is, Rob, would you continue to buy at those levels? And I thought about it. Let me show you a picture that explains exactly what, I'm, what I mean. <laughs> Bring this up. Hold on one second. I'm sure these things available to me, but this is what I mean. If it went at 20K, I'm going to be buying a lot. And if it goes at 15K, I'm going to be buying even more. And I'm going to tell you why. And this is, just remember this. And I showed this before. This is how people think. This is how the new investor thinks. And I think that you're, if you're here right now, you're not a crypto tourist because this is, if you look at the fear and greed index, I think we're at nine. So you are a pro. And if you're a pro, then this makes sense to you because this is how people look at things and go, this is how I value it. If the price is high, it has value. If the price is low, it has no value. And this is what I think we're all striving to go against. And that's the truth. So again, at 15K, I'm going to be buying, I'll probably be doubling or tripling one of those two of my dollar cost average every day, just so you know. And again, that's what I'm doing. I'm not telling you what to do. Uh, that's a good one. Buy fear and sell greed. Yeah, absolutely. Buy fear and sell greed. Well, it's like, it's like, well, they say, uh, blood in the streets or be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when other people are greedy. You know, for as much people, as much of the time that people say they hate Warren Buffett, they sure do quote him a lot in crypto. Just saying. Uh, okay. Here's a good one. If you use a ledger, when you decide to get out of a cold, out of cold storage, does Ledger have a wallet to use? Well, that is the wallet. Um, they have a, a desktop app called Ledger Live. And if this is confusing, I get it because it, it gets confusing. Just go to danteachescrypto.com. Just sign up, which is free. The only thing I ask that you do is if you, all the links in, in Dan Teaches Crypto, they are affiliate links. And I talked about that in the very first video that you watch. So if you go there, 
the very first chapter. It's called uh, The Basics. That's it. And then it continues on with safety and then investment strategies. So just take a look at that. <laughs> yeah, Liliana. So everybody, everybody thinks you're crazy until you make it. And then you're a genius. So that's the same thing with me. That's why I have this channel. I have this channel for two reasons. First of all, I can't keep talking to my wife about it and my friends because they think I'm nuts. Because they're like, do you talk is anything else? And the second reason is because I'm pretty much retired from the things that I've, I mean, most of my companies just work pretty much on autopilot. I mean, the Amazon FBA is on auto, um, the sports facility, I, so other people run that for me. Uh, the online education platform for nurses, that's, that's just videos recorded of me. So I don't really do much and that's it. So I did this because it gives me purpose. And uh, that's the big thing. Now we talked about this yesterday, actually. If you think that retiring is great, it's not, it sucks. Uh, if you don't have purpose, it is the, the worst life you'll ever have. So make sure that before you retire, you figure out what is most important to you and do that thing. Uh, okay. It's good questions. How many sweat coins do you have? Well, I gave away like 100,000 or something like that for that Ukraine thing. So let's see. Sweat coin. I have 5,700 steps today. That's a little bit lower than my 10,000. Just saying, I will, I'll hit that ring. I have 1,000, I have 963 sweat coins. So, so I didn't give a, I didn't give a million, I have 1,000. So I already gave 1,000 to the Ukraine thing. So yeah. Again, if you're late, just, oh, you're right. Torix got a good point. Sweat coin is on the near protocol, not Binance coin. You are correct. Thank you. Really struggling with finding purpose. Let me show you something. So in 2015 or 2014 and 15, I moved to Vegas when me and my wife split up. And there is no better place or worse place when you are single in Las Vegas, Poof, two years there. And uh, I figured out pretty quickly that at that time, that's when I just started to just, I gave up uh, uh, working as a, uh, for a nationwide home health company for an intake coordinator, which is pretty fun. But uh, I just started to focus on uh, the real estate, the, online, the online, online businesses and just went from there and didn't have to do anything. It was, it got pretty, pretty, pretty hairy. So there's this on my website, Dan Deutsch Crypto, there's a blog post. I wrote this like two years ago and it talks about that problem that I had. And there's a good quote here from Benjamin Franklin. Money will never make a man happy. Uh, the more a man has, the more he wants. Instead of filling a vacuum, it makes one. That's the truth. So this is the big thing. This is from, uh, from Tony Sai or Shea from uh, Zappos. And he says, the happiness frame are the three types of happiness. And this is where I was in Vegas. The rock star, chase the next high, whatever I was into at that point. A lot of stuff. So you go from there and that doesn't last too long. Then you find a little bit of passion, whatever that is. And then you really get into something, right? And then there's this higher purpose meaning. And this is, I, I think, if you can find this part, whatever motivates you, is it to help people? Is it to educate people? That's one of my things I like to do to try to give back as much as possible. Or is it just to create businesses or to create opportunities or to be that uh, great father or mother for, for your kids or whatever it is. Or and The thing is to find this part here makes all this stuff uh, negate but the happiness and the time at the crossroads this is fast and fleeting and it'll always make you feel a little bit worse this makes you feel a little better but again to find the purpose whatever that is so that went off the road that's the best way i can tell you i found i found mine now it's just you got to go with that process to find yours all right oh yeah see 
This is a great one. Ruben says, I do construction like uh, rebuilding houses, flip them through electrical and do it for years. That's a great deal, especially right now. You're probably killing it. Good for, good for you, man. It's like therapy, doing physical work like that. And that's the thing. That's why we do that, uh, that uh, charity event for the obstacle course on our, on our properties. Uh, we do it every year, twice a year. Uh, it's for uh, underprivileged kids. It usually goes to the Boys and Girls Club of El Paso. And uh, all the proceeds go to that. It's just a, 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 a 1.6 mile obstacle course anybody can finish. And you know, it gives you purpose. So you're out there and you're sweating. Like in August, when I do it again, it'll be 100 degrees again. And I'll get to work out there again. But it's a labor of love. So like, yeah, type, type of thing. Sometimes it's one of those deals. Uh, okay. Unplug Zen's got a pretty good point here. And then I think after this, we're going we're to take out. We're going for an hour. The problem is when Bitcoin is at 69K, most influencers are saying it's going to 70, 80, 120K. And when people buy at the price, they get dumped. Now the influencers are still asking to buy. They're stuck in case. So here's the thing. And uh, I was guilty of this too. I'll be honest with you. I did a price prediction video. And I thought just by fractals and things that, that went on in the, in the four-year cycles, which I still think actually are, are intact. And I'll show you in a bit. I'll show you next video. But I was calling for Bitcoin at 150K. I thought it would go to 150K. I thought, I was, and I thought uh, Ethereum would go to uh, 10K. It didn't work out like that. And I'm going to, the price predictions, it's okay to predict a price. Like I can say Bitcoin's going to 250K. I just can't tell you when that is. I know people say, well, that's worthless, but it gives you some a kind of a framework to think about. Just like when we talked about with, This story, half a trillion dollar asset manager saying, hey, uh, this will transform the financial sector over the next 10 years. So if I say that Bitcoin's going to 250,000, maybe it takes 10 years, maybe it takes five, I don't know. But it gives you like that, lets you off the hook to not say like it has to happen now because that's when I'm going to be a millionaire, I'm going to retire. We never know when that is. So yeah, like I got caught up in that. I will never get, I will not get caught up in that. And the other thing I'll never get caught up is telling to remind everybody when we start to start to hit those parabolics to remind everybody, look, nobody, everyone broke taking profits. I'm taking profits at this point and I will get made fun of. And people call me stupid because I should wait until it goes to that 150, 250 K. But here's the thing. Whenever you sell, you're still wrong. Even if Bitcoin hits a million dollars tomorrow and you sell, you know, people will still double second guess you. Even your family and friends might second guess you going, why did you sell it a million? Didn't you know it's going to two? So it doesn't really matter. I, I think a lot of people wouldn't feel this pressure if they would have taken profits along the way and had dry powder on the sidelines. And uh, I will never uh, forget to say those things again. Take profits. All right, everybody, that's it. This is an hour. So thanks for staying for the live stream. We're going to cut the Q&A. This will be a separate video, uh, but you know that if you're watching the replay. But that's it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. Um, all the good stuff. Enjoy the weekend. Get out there. It's a beautiful day. I'll see you on the next one. Adios.